Hi, my name is Mitchell Foster. I'm a resident here at NYU. Today we're going to be talking about the fascia iliaca block. This is a very useful block for providing analgesia with your patients with proximal femur fractures and other hip fractures while awaiting definitive intervention. Contraindications to this procedure are infection overlying the site, allergy to anesthetic, or a relative contraindication is anticoagulation. So let's get into the nerve block, the different aspects of what you'll need for the nerve block, the ultrasound anatomic considerations, and some other fine tips. Okay, so here we have some of the different materials you'll need for this nerve block. First, you'll need your different sterile materials. Is a procedure that should be done with standard sterile precautions. You should have sterile drape and chloroprep to cleanse the area, as well as a sterile ultrasound probe cover and sterile gloves. Beyond that, you'll need your needles for accessing the space. This should be either a spinal needle, a 20 gauge 100 millimeter spinal needle that most emergency departments have, or some emergency departments have uh, specific echogenic needles for nerve Nerve blocks. You'll also need IV tubing for your spinal needle and some needles to instill the medication for the lidocaine wheel. Other medications that you'll need are preferably bupivacaine given its prolonged action of six to eight hours and lidocaine for injection of the wheel which is a faster time to onset. You'll need either sterile water or sterile saline for hydrodissection and a standard ultrasound typically with linear probe used although in some patients who are more obese you may need to curve the linear probe. So now let's get into positioning the patient and anatomy considerations for the procedure. So you'd like to have your patient supine with their legs slightly externally rotated with the ultrasound on the other side of the operator and your Mayo stand next to you for all your materials. Next, let's get into some of the anatomic considerations you'll see on ultrasound. With the patient positioned appropriately, you'll place the ultrasound probe along the patient's inguinal crease. The operator is going to identify the femoral artery and the femoral vein. If the femoral vein is more medial and the femoral artery is lateral. Common mistakes will be to have the transducer too low. You want to make sure that you're proximal to the femoral artery bifurcation. Just lateral to that, the femoral nerve is going to be visible. It's important to remember that this is a planar block, meaning instead of injecting medication directly adjacent to the nerve bundle or intranerally, we're going to inject underneath the fascial plane lateral to the nerve to bathe medication around the femoral nerve, lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, and possibly proximal into the lumbosacral plexus. This way the needle tip stays further away from dangerous targets and complications. The medication will naturally flow in the correct location, proximal and medial. The needle is going to be advanced laterally to medially, passing through the sartorius muscle until you see and feel the needle pop through the fascia iliaca overlying the iliacus muscle. After first aspirating to ensure you aren't in a blood vessel, gently inject a test dose of one to two milliliters of saline or sterile water to ensure you're in the correct location. You should hydrodissect an anechoic plane underneath the fascia. Switch to the syringe with the medication at this point and begin injecting further with your anesthetic and you should see further hydrodissection unzipping the fascial plane apart. With the medication spreading medially towards the femoral nerves and your other nervous targets, the patient should begin to have significant relief over the next 15 to 30 minutes. This is a large volume block so always check beforehand to make sure that you are with in the safe dosage for the patient's weight. The patient should be monitored on cardiac monitor during this procedure to ensure there is not significant cardiac side effects from the large dose of lidocaine or bupivacaine. Some pro tips for this procedure. We recommend using color ultrasound over your area of interest to identify any additional vasculature that may be in the area and avoid intravascular injection. Some individuals find it difficult to find a true in-plane approach with their ultrasound. And if that's the case, keep your ultrasound fixed and make small movements with the needle without advancing. Lastly, if the needle is not fully advanced through the fascia, when you attempt to hydrodissect, you will not see an anechoic and zipping and instead will just see swelling of the muscular fibers there. If that's the case, you will need to advance further and you should see a true anechoic unzipping of the fascia before injecting your anesthetic. So that's all folks. I hope you enjoyed this overview of the fascia iliaca block. I hope that it helps you attempt to use it more with your patients who have these traumatic injuries. It can be very useful in providing them with significant pain relief while awaiting surgery. With all things, this takes practice, whether it's with your senior residents or attendings or in the sim lab. And I hope that it is something that you'll continue to work on and master going forward. So go ahead and smash the like button, go check out our other videos, and we'll see you next time.